Sports has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. To the backing, beautiful. All right, that one is right out of the kelp, right tight. And about 15 feet of water, and that was just a blind cast. Didn't see bait or anything. He found me. Good looking fish, good looking fish. I tell you, I am loving, loving these fish. a really good fish. What are we dealing with here? Big, small, coho on the fly. Incredible hobby. Him. Yeah, we got some early morning fog in here, but that's gonna burn off. Fantastic brace of fish this is. Look at him. Yeah. True August fishery. That's an August fish for sure. Wow, you can see the big kite jaw. Wow. Now, I'm gonna try to hand tail them. I'm gonna use a net on these fish. It takes the scales off and it can damage the protective slime layer that protects them from disease. That's a pretty nice brace of fish right there. Nice August coho. Behind me is the Great Bear Rainforest, an area the size of Banff National Park that's protected where wild salmon still swim, where the rivers are still intact August 1st, searching out, still looking for silvers, any indication of movement, sloping beaches, just the right topography. This is just a gorgeous little cove, sandy beach, kelp. I can see bait fish in here. And we're just kind of looking for any movement, any indication that there's some fish out there. It's got all the eel grass, sand floors, kelp, and bait fish. Last year we covered the July fishery, all the key things, equipment, flies, leading points, bait passageways. I'm just coming into the same piece of water I fished just over a year ago. We're, the season two, we're gonna concentrate on the August fishery. So these fish should, should be more fed, bigger. And I wanna see if these big fish are still in here. So I'm just gonna put a couple of casts in. And all we're doing here is we're just as a Cortland 225 grain 
professional series quick descent. We're just taking the fly line, getting the 24 foot head simply once that heads out and then it just launches the whole line really simple and we're just picking pockets along this wall of kelp and this is perfect 30 feet you know uh, 1830 to 60 nice drop off area and we're targeting fish that aren't off shore a bit targeting bait balls that's something you can rely on we're actually targeting fish that are holding along shorelines in kelp predating on bait this sage nine foot xi3 is designed to do a lot of the work for you so i'll show you what i mean i'm just lightly holding it got my running line you can see the 24 foot tip on there little roll cast out and it's simply one, two, and the whole fly line goes out. That's how easy it is. But just timing your single haul, your double haul, and then letting that rod just gently carry it out for you. That's, that's where you get, you know, the, the strength in the rods. You want it, this, the butt section of the rod has a certain taper characteristic of strength, and then the tip has a very soft and I'm not talking ridiculously it you see how it transfers the energy in just the right way if this area is too soft you can see how the cast would collapse but in this particular rod and there's dozens of manufacturers that make incredible fly rods that have you know good characteristics for casting as far as saltwater fly fishing goes islanders are kind of legendary they're made in Sydney, British Columbia. They're uh, anodized saltwater fly reels, uh, incredibly uh, low maintenance reels, a nice knurled drag system, cork and uh, rosewood handles. With the saltwater fly fishing, a lot of people like to switch over to the plastic handles. That's an option that you can have with Islander. But they're, um, I've used these for 20 years, saltwater fly fishing, and they're uh, an incredible piece of equipment. Well, it's been about two and a half, three hours of fishing, fishing all these key points, the kelp, all the classic shady areas that I found them in July last year. Almost every time you could go back to that spot and that fish would hold up in that spot. It's a different year. I'm fishing a month later. It's an August. Gorgeous bait fish pattern with the flash tail, bit of synthetic polar bear and uh, that is a very accurate, it could be almost the needlefish that we saw or the herring that will be out there. And I'm gonna put the same knot that I've got on here, the Duncan loop, to give that articulation on the fly. Just seen a beautiful school of herring just milling around with no fear. I've switched over to an exacting herring pattern. I'm literally pulling it through the herring now four to six inch herring swimming under this boat with no fear in their eyes. So the bait populations are here. And the coho are with them. There you go. Oh, there's just some monsters too. Ah, I got the smaller one in this. Oh my goodness, life is good. Now, unbelievable. A lot of people think in saltwater fly fishing that the saltwater pattern doesn't really matter. I assure you, it does. That school of herring right under the boat, you can see the pattern that's out there on that fish. Fantastic. Must be exacting. You should have seen this guy's brother. Man, oh man. There we go, let's pop the fly out of this little silver. Beautiful silver. Nice. 
Boy, unbelievable. You might find the bait there and the fish won't be there at one point. They might be on a different bait, different location. It's something that can have a needlefish matched with a herring profile as it swims was the ticket. There we go. We're about four hours in. There's been little subtle indications of fish and bait, but we're really having to maximize opportunities. When we see that bait, get the fly down. It's been about 15 minutes since that last fish, and here's the bait again, right off the left. Oh, bit right there. Oh man, I just scared the bait away moving on the boat. Unbelievable. Well, the bait went that direction, so maybe I'll make a cast that way. The minute you see the bait, generally, and especially herring, they, uh, they follow the schools for miles, I'm convinced. As the sunlight, you know, you often think, does the sun keep them down a little bit, a little deeper than it might be on an overcast day? Questions like that, you're always guessing. But here's the bait again. I'm just seeing it off the uh, bow of the boat. But again, I'm not seeing coho slashing it. Big cast out here. A couple of false casts, let her go. And I'm purposefully letting it sink down into that. This is gorgeous, 30 feet of water with a 60 foot transition and then down to 120. And it seems that they'll stay on the outside, be swimming along, they see the bait, they come up, do their feeding and back down into these safer zones. I've just noticed those fish have moved off. If there was two fly anglers in the boat, we both would have been hooked up. But the baits moved off and so did the fish. And I just noticed some subtle indications and a little splashing on the surface a couple hundred yards out. I don't want to miss this school of fish. Oh, fabulous. Nice silver. I'm a little rusty at this. Ooh, this is, this is a good looking fish. There's your August quality, quality brace of fish right there. There you are. We're still on that bait fish pattern. We're about five and a half hours in. Nice. And predominantly, they've not been where they were last year. Um, today, anyway, the numbers are lower. That can be due to a number of factors too. There's commercial openings that can have a big impact. hook. Look at that beautiful brace of fish right there. Look at that. Not long before that. You can see the jaw, the nose is and the jaw is starting to kipe. Wild fish heading up one of these unbelievably wild creeks and rivers of the Great Bear Rainforest. 200 mile long stretch, a pristine 
coastline. Oh yeah. And by no means it's being hot and by no means on day one is there a pattern put together. But as they haven't been in super shallow, we've just been fishing transitions all day, which means we're just casting out into the deep, letting it sink for a good two minutes and bringing it up on the transition and picking off the odd fish that's by or down, coming up, getting its bait and heading back down. But very sporadic, I'm seeing, you know, bait once an hour and then in every second school, you'll see one or two of these big fish, but I've had no follows in five hours. It's a beautiful fish, man. Holy smokes. See that pattern? It's definitely been the hot ticket today. You can see beautiful fish, Ooh. beautiful bait fish pattern on them. It's been absolutely the ticket. Takes off. Well, we're about the five hour point and uh, been an interesting day for day one, and it's amazing how day to day in saltwater fly fishing for salmon, how things can change. Putting in more time today, but the results, stunning chrome fish. Right. This is exactly why the right topography for the eelgrass, the sandy beach, is so conducive to the silvers, the coho salmon being in here. There is an unlimited amount of bait that locks up in these bays. And sometimes it's just simply a matter of sitting and waiting, half hour or an hour, whatever it takes until those salmon just move in. Eventually, they do move in. Day one, always trying to put your patterns together. Did we put one together? I'm not quite sure, but I'll let you know what we did uh, use today. We started off with clousers, just like this. Nice shrimp colors, but um, couldn't bring a fish to hand with those. What really started to make it work were these bait fish patterns. And uh, catching coho on eight weights. Uh, there's a real reverence to that species. You, you can see they, they do everything a fish is supposed to do. And when you're getting them on light gear, uh, it's a real treat. I mean, just silver salmon on the fly. You really can't say more than that. The equipment we've been using, this is an eight weight. We talked about tapers today, making sure that it's got that strong taper that can, you don't really have to power the rods anymore. They can do the work for you. Get that 24 foot shooting head to the tip get the hull and that whole line should head out. This is the XI3 model. There's a num number of good companies that make good quality nine foot fly rods that you can pack on an airplane wherever you want to go. The four piece are the way to go. These Islanders I've been using for 20 years. They're the LX 3.8 and we'll use the LX 4.0 model, but generally the LX 3.8, you can see it will hold beautiful uh, amount of backing and the fly lines that we're using are the Cortland Precision Subsurface to the professional grade, 24 foot sinking tips, 225 grain and 325 grains. Now you'll notice on that fly box it says dual loops. Make sure when you buy a fly line it has the dual loops because here's the key part which I absolutely love. You don't have to tie any of those nail knots anymore. I'll just get to the line. All you do, as you can see with these leaders, 
just like this, tapered leaders. They're nine feet and they taper down to a 20 pound. And what I'll do is I'll just add a piece of 15 pound tippet to the end as it's used, you know, over days. You eventually have to lengthen it back to that nine foot length to get the proper taper. And you can just see how it works. It's just pretty simple. It just goes over the fly line and loops back on itself. And that's just a beautiful thing for saltwater fly fishing. You can see the amount of patterns in salt fly, but for day one, August 1st, this is how it happened. Saltwater fly fishing in the Pacific, an incredible hobby. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on the Legacy Experience. The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line.